Hello folks. I'm here in the Wind River Range of Wyoming uh, in a beautiful little river valley. Uh, we're up here uh, chasing some trophy uh, uh, golden trout in some of the high, high mountain lakes. I decided to stay in camp today. We, we came in on Monday. Today's Wednesday. Been here a couple days. So I want to talk to you a little bit about how we keep the animals here in camp. Um, I've got uh, a, uh, this is one inch electric fence ribbon here and there's a uh, fence charger that will run about a mile of fence for two weeks off of two D-cell batteries. And uh, it's very effective. It puts out about 700 volts of electricity. Like a little, it, it's pretty, it's pretty slow shock. You know, it'll hit them good enough to keep them in the fence. Um, but now the key is I don't, like I said, it's 340 feet of ribbon. I don't give them all that at once. This grass is just about knee deep out here and really lush and green this river valley. So it'd be a bad idea to give them that much grass that quickly. So I kind of expanded out by about 20 feet a day or so. Um, and that's what I've been doing here. And uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm kind of moving it out in this deeper grass each day. Gives them plenty of grass. Uh, the other thing I'll do is um, I got these little uh, little lights I get from Walmart. They're I don't know, like 99 cent real cheapos, and I'll put I'll put these on the corners of the of the electric fence uh, just in case somebody's coming through in the middle of the night and stumbles on this fence. They'll they'll see these lights and not get not get shocked. So I, I kind of put those on the corner and, and they're, they're real lightweight, real cheap, and they work real well. Um, but you, you take the, the stake out of the end of that and it slides right over the fence post pretty good. And what I do with the fence post is we'll, I'll take them and um, I cut about, these are fiberglass fence poles, I'll cut about maybe, I don't know, eight or nine inches off of them so that they fit inside the panniers real well and don't stick out and catch trees and stuff. And I have a little bag that I put them in and I wrap them up and it's a, it's a really good compact system. It's really the best way I've found for keeping them in camp. Um, you know, you can high line, you can hobble, you can pick it. All those are good options. Uh, but, you know, there's been a couple studies done. I, I, last year at the Donkey Welfare Symposium, uh, a fellow put on a really good presentation that he had done over several years to try to ascertain what the, the, the what, what was the biggest reason for, for deaths of equines in the back country. And he came up for, he had several different, um, you know, findings there. And he'd studied anywhere from novice to experienced backcountry uh, outfitters who do this all the time for a living. And he found that the number one reason for deaths in, in the backcountry was ropes, okay? Something to do with ropes, high lines, pickets, um, uh, tying to a tree. Uh, and, and, you know, even experienced horses, mules, and donkeys can get themselves into trouble on ropes. Um, it happens. And so that was his number one finding that he found that most of the equines died from some complication uh, being tied. And then number two was, uh, was water uh, and, and complications from not having enough water when they're in the back country. And so that's the other thing that I try to do. I try to make sure these guys are well hydrated while we're out here. I've got uh, one of my inserts right there that I, that I brought. It's got maybe... Um, you can put about 15 gallons of water in those, uh, and it does a good job. I try to keep it topped off each day, and what I do that with, I've got, uh, I've got these, um, these, it's called a kitchen sink, um, and it works well. It's by uh, Sea to Summit, and I'll just go down and, and I'll dip maybe, maybe a, a one or two of these a day. I've kind of found that, I mean, just kind of just watch how much they drink. It seems like a donkey will drink about two and a half, three gallons of water a day. So that kind of gives you an idea if you're going to keep four animals in there, how much water you need to keep for them each day to keep water. So that's what I do. I just kind of fill this up each day. Then the other thing I do to make sure they're drinking water while they're out here, while they're eating all this food, is I give them these um, electrolytes. This is by Smart Pack, and these are called, it's called Smart Lights. And what I do is each one of the one of these. This is for two donk, two animals right here. I'll, about once a day, I'll give them. A, I'll give them this. Pour this in my hand and give it to them. And it's really, really salty. I've tasted it. <laughs> but uh, even though it says for equine use only on there, I tried it. Tried it myself. But uh, but yeah, it, it it really makes them thirsty. So you want to make sure if you're giving them this that you're also ensuring there's lots of water on hand. You know, you can, you're not really supposed to. Pet th put this electric fence on a creek uh, because in, in wilderness areas, uh, depending on what wilderness area you're in, 
It could be 100 feet from a creek, 200 or 300 feet, depending on where you're at. Uh, you need to kind of check that. Right here, I think we're probably two, 250 feet away from the creek is where we're at and off the trail as well. Uh, so you know, a few things to consider. You want to make sure you're off the trail. Uh, if you've got other equines coming down the trail, uh, you know, these animals could spook them. Uh, if, and we just had a, a whole uh, a train of llamas come through. And old Duncan here, my mule, does not like llamas. So it's kind of good to keep them off the trail a little bit, back away from that sort of thing. And you want to you be mindful of that. Just check where you're at to see what the, what the rules are and regulations for being off. Uh, off trail off off of uh, any water source so that's how I'm keeping them in camp and it works pretty well um, you know I I just uh, I guess I sleep better at night knowing that they're in here and they're not going to go anywhere uh, I've never had an issue never had one uh, get out uh, you know I do a lot of training at home before we come here to get peace of mind to know they're going to be used to the electric corral before we ever come out here um, now I will tell you this uh, the only time I've ever had them get out is when the electric fence charger stopped working. I dropped it one time and it, it didn't work. And after, I don't know, a, a day or so, they figure out it's not on and they smell it. I don't know what they smell, but they'll sniff it. I don't know if it's, if it's uh, if they can hear the popping of the electricity or they're smelling something, I don't know. But they figure out that this thing is not on and eventually they will step out of it. Uh, so, um, you need to make sure you bring in extra batteries and you're checking to make sure. I bring a little, uh, a little voltage checker that I'll hook to the fence, stick in the ground and make sure it's putting out enough volts. So that's something you want to do. Um, so yeah, this is how we keep them in, in camp and it work, it's very effective. It works really well, so I'm happy with this system.